Good evening, everybody. I'm Pixie from Planet Pixie, and I'm joined this evening by Jenny from Magpie Eye Photography. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you're watching live, please comment along. And if you're watching on the replay, please hashtag replay. If you've got any questions, uh, we'll try and come back and answer them later. Uh, good evening, Jenny. Hi. Hello. Uh, so tell us about yourself. Uh, so I, my name is Jenny and I am a producer and photographer based in London. Uh, I have been doing photography for longer than anyone can remember. I, I actually learned photography before we had digital cameras. So yeah, that long. Um, but I progressed through doing music photography and into weddings um, about 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. The way I shoot is actually surprisingly similar. You know, live music has a lot of unexpected events and it's really dark, which tends to be the same as weddings. Um, so yeah, it was it was a surprisingly smooth transition. And, and thanks to Instagram and DIY weddings, it's really great. I, I love how wedding photography and, and weddings themselves have emerged over the years into these real celebrations of individuality and uniqueness, um, which is kind of a photographer's dream. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, I really love doing it. So what have you been doing whilst you've not been able to do uh, weddings? Well, yeah, it's been it's been tricky, I have to say, and I think uh, a lot of a lot of creatives, not just in the wedding industry, you know, in every every industry, and events and hospitality, and everyone's had to really kind of adapt and come up with new things to do and new ways to make the most of their skills and to support people that we would have been working with before. So it's been a very interesting sort of six to eight months for everyone, I'm sure. Um, for me, I looked at lots of different projects, um, especially at the start of lockdown. I, I really kind of was toying with the idea of photography and documenting. I had a big thing about documenting what was going on at the moment. Um, I am obsessed with styled shoots. It's the producer in me. I just, I get ideas and, and I can make them happen. <laughs> so so I tend to just go down that path until it's right in front of me. Um, and I think sort of as a result of of that knowledge that I knew I could make it happen and perhaps the fact that I wasn't allowed to for so long in lockdown as soon as we got to the point where six people were allowed outside socially distanced I reached out to a couple of people I'd worked with before um, to work on a sort of Halloween photo shoot idea I love Halloween I'm obsessed I love Halloween more than Me Christmas. Too. That's how much I love Halloween. <laughs> um, so, and I just thought, why have I never done a shoot for myself? Like I've spent so many years kind of, and, I, and I don't get me wrong, I love working with other people's ideas, but everyone was in lockdown and everyone was, you know, not around. So I thought, well, let's just be really indulgent. I've, I've barely shot anything for six months. So let's just shoot everything that I want to do. Um, and I think probably because everyone had also not done anything in six months, I just contacted a few people and they're like, yes, yes, I'll do it, anything, anything. <laughs> so so the these are the um, sneaky pictures you shared with me earlier. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I, I'll stick them on the screen. Yeah, um, go for it. Good evening, Keisha. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to uh, ask any questions. So these are the, question, the pictures you sent me earlier. Yeah, it was, as I say, actually, it, it started with the idea of a skeleton. The makeup artist, uh, Simone, I worked with before, and she's she's really talented. She does special effects makeup as well as doing more realistic makeup. Um, and I just had this idea of doing a skull on, on black skin. Um, and it sort of evolved from there. I actually have, have teetered the line between voodoo and skeleton and Halloween and bridal, and but it's all the things I love. <laughs> so I, I'm quite happy with it. The contact lenses were hilarious actually because Nadea, who was our model, was an absolute trooper. She'd not worn contact lenses before. And I don't know if anyone's ever tried to put lenses in. Like I work, I've worn contact lenses since I was 12, so I'm really used to it. But if you've not done it, it takes a lot to get over that fear of like poking yourself, poking in, yourself in the eye. eye. You know, that's a natural instinct to not want to do that. And she tried and tried for ages and then, and Simone did as well, bless her. Like between the two of them, they were trying so hard to get these lenses in. And then like <laughs> mum and me was like, right, I'll do it. But it worked. We we're all like, yeah. <laughs> so um I, I did talk to this day I feel bad about that. But she was such a trooper. I really do think that it, it was a, a proper um, you know, commitment to the cause to to pair, to bear with it. And then by the time we actually got here, 
she said she'd forgotten she couldn't fill them in there at all. So, you know, it worked out better. I was worried that I'd I hurt her, <laughs> but no, apparently not. She, did, she doesn't look like you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. It was, we actually, we shot this, um, I shot this. It was only me and her because <laughs> lockdown, but between these two rows of trees next to a play park that my son plays in that has tennis courts one side and then a play park the other side. Um, which it just looks so unlikely a place to be there but yeah it's it's brilliant I, I think I'm going to go there again actually it's such a kind of because the two rows of trees go on for ages and obviously in this shoot I was really focused on her and I like the way the trees are close but you could do something yeah. like with the perspective of them going really far away um but it looks it ultimate I'm doing what I always do and pointing at the screen like people can see me but <laughs> see where I'm pointing it looks like there's so much more than just two rows mm, yeah it looks like a forest isn't it it's, it's the lens it's a wide angle it's a wide lens so it sort of bends things round, kind of like the opposite of a spoon um which i like i like that claustrophobicness because it, it, in reality it's probably what's that yeah it adds to that beautiful dark imagery doesn't it to, to have it like closed in yeah no i love it i'm really really proud of it actually it's yeah i should i should do what i want more <laughs> that's my lesson <laughs> yes it looks like it pays off so didn't you you said this you got this uh some this dress somebody yes is it? yeah so the dress is from a company called i don't know how to pronounce it but shot Trinet. so it's c-h-o-t shot and then r o n e t t e uh, i can't remember where they're based it's in europe it's not in england and i when did i gosh i can't remember when i first came across them but it was a long time ago um and they just make the most brilliant dresses they're really um i don't know how to describe it quirky that's the right word they're really quirky they're not like all goth and they're not all punk and they're not all certainly not all traditional but Honestly, anything you can imagine, they've got the most incredible kind of layers of tool just going everywhere. And then what are some other ones? Swans, that was one. I did a shoot with this dress that was like blue and white and it had two swans like sequined. They're very extra, but I just think they're fabulous. They're definitely I, my, my favourite yeah, supplier, certainly. I, I'd recommend yeah. people for them. <laughs> I'm sure nobody would guess, but I quite like extra. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> That's really effective. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite one. And the the headdress actually is like from a a, um, a company called It's a Festival Ting. So they're more kind of like boho festival, but obviously I used the the headband in a completely different way. And I, I yeah, I love it. I think it works really well. It works. It really works. Yeah. It would be as different as they are. And you, I wouldn't necessarily look at that and think that's a wedding photo. No, I know. <laughs> I, maybe not the makeup as such, but to, <laughs> to get those kind of arty looks. So I know if I, if, if I was to get married and have the traditional pictures, um, I probably wouldn't put them on the wall because I'd feel like a bit of a plum. But <laughs> if it's about an artistic piece, Hmm. I'd be more likely to be that annoying bride sticking her wedding photos in people's faces. Yeah. Because it's not just about the person well, in the yeah. it's about yeah. the whole yeah, image. Right. I think that's where my background in music photography is really affecting me because like, you know, I shot album covers and posters and, you know, images like that were iconographic for bands. Um and I mean, even now looking at the pictures as you show them, this is clearly that, isn't it? I think I kind of meld the two. But I, as I say, I do like to do that on wedding days. And that's why I love alternative weddings, because people are generally already telling a story visually by their style and their, their individuality. And so, you know, for me to simply compose an image out of what they've already created, you know, is is great. It's brilliant. Like, as I say, all of this would be done. I just lie on the floor and get muddy and take a picture so yeah it's it's definitely the whole styled shoot thing is something that I really enjoy doing and hope I get to do more of in future yeah it, it, it's definitely impactful because you don't that's why I like alternative weddings because for some oh for a lot I imagine no offense to anybody but you could probably look at several wedding photos and 
if they're far enough away that you can't see their faces, you don't know whose wedding it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a bit of a shame, really, when you've got such an opportunity to express who you are and who you who you both are together. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a lovely picture. Thanks. How did where is she sat on the floor? Mm -hmm. I'm just above her. Yeah. Harder than necessary. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, she sat on the floor on a bin bag because <laughs> the floor was muddy. So I put a bin bag down as <laughs> I sit on that. <laughs> Again, it works. So yeah. why not? Oh, I'm making you tell everybody your secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful Thanks pictures. Thanks so much. Keep clicking through them. Um, but what are you, where are you going next? What are you doing? Because obviously we, we don't know when we're going to be allowed to get back to... Mm. big weddings do we no it's it's something that I, I've thought about a lot as I say and I, I'm sure lots of people have as well and there's um coming up I've actually got two projects that I'm quite excited about one of which is uh kind of following on from that set of pictures there's a couple of uh print magazines slash blog slash Instagram account people that I have asked to do a collab I've got this kind of fanciful idea of getting the cover of a magazine I really love the idea of like getting yeah getting the cover and working with the magazine on on a project or something and someone mentioned I did a shoot with the drag queen about gosh how long ago was that maybe three or four years ago like a bridal drag queen which was the most brilliant fun in the world ever um not least because of the men that thought that she was a woman and were catcalling her uh, and her yeah. response absolutely fantastic loved it had so much fun uh, and yeah she we talk we're still friends on instagram and she often says we should do something together again and i'm i'm desperate to do it so anyway yeah that's one thing and i was just before talking to you researching you know marlene dietrich who was obviously like i, I think a really early advocate of lgbtq plus um so i was wondering if maybe we could do something with that so already my brain's firing on all cylinders for that but also um i am because weddings have now been on hold for quite a while. And even when they weren't on hold, as I'm sure everyone knows, we went down to 15 guests, which, you know, is, yeah. is totally fine. Lots of people love a small wedding. I like a small wedding. However, I think the tradition, I read recently, like the tradition in the UK anyway, is an average of like 25K people spend on a wedding. Um, yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a huge amount of money that people have saved likely for a very long time. Um, and right now it's all on hold you know it's this is why it's so heartbreaking when you hear about people losing deposits and businesses shutting down and because it's it's a sort of what you call it like a chain you know so one link in the chain breaks and it doesn't it suddenly affects everyone so yeah it's been yeah, tricky sure. but my belief my sort of suspicion or hope maybe a little bit is that elopements they're already on the rise. We know they're on the rise at the moment, but I hope that it becomes more accessible for people. I think a lot of people still feel like only only people with loads of money elope or only people yeah. are abroad or have a big house in the countryside. Or, But I think nowadays we have, you know, Airbnb. There are Airbnbs that you can hire for a, a family of seven and you can get married on site, you know, on a mountain or something. It's like, breaking. I think it's, it's people finding their freedom and their acceptance that it's okay to break traditions yes so agreed. Many people still think oh but i need to invite every tom dick and harry i need to have the 250 guests and if i don't invite my mom's hairdresser's daughter somebody's going to fall out with me and it you know people are still stuck in those traditions that quite often not realizing why they're even a tradition and where they stem from in the first place mm. which some of them actually when you look at them are quite like I would not do that if, if yeah. I it came from. Um, I think once people kind of break that, it probably would, because who doesn't want it? Well, unless you don't like the sun. But, you know, why wouldn't you want to go abroad and get married where you don't have to worry about everybody's heels sinking into the grass because it won't stop raining because you got married outdoors in Manchester? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually, I was talking to someone recently about like the idea of packages. And I, again, it's another thing I've been thinking about, but putting together sort of elopement packages more specifically for alternative, you know, couples yeah. getting married. So, you know, you could do a, a really brilliant like cave elopement or something where everything's sort of sorted. And then you can do somewhere like Austria in a forest with snow or so all these places I mean I 
you know, obviously it depends on what the regulations are in each of those countries as yeah. well in the future. But my interest yeah, is like Spain, you can't get married in Spain unless you've lived there for two years. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I'll look add, add that to my research list. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I was watching. I'm guilty of watching trash TV and oh. may have been binge watching. Don't tell the bride. Yeah. Um, and somebody was arranging one in Ibiza and they were like, well, you can't legally get married in Ibiza. I was like, well, that's ridiculous. It's an entire island. People live there. Um, yeah. yeah, I Googled it and it's it's not just Ibiza. It's um, Spain. Oh. Um, at least one of you have to have lived there for two years unless it's a, I think it was a Catholic wedding. Oh, OK. Interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I find it fascinating, all the different rules and regulations in different countries. And, and that in itself is, to be honest, why I was thinking about packages, because I think yeah. is, you know, as I say, I'm a producer and a photographer. So that's quite a good skill set to have if people are looking to do a wedding that's more than just pictures. Do you know what I mean? They don't just want someone yeah. to do pictures. They actually need someone to help them with the planning and the options. Yeah, it's good to give stuff. somebody like a different kind of perspective on places as well like I if you'd have said to me five years ago that I would have I would go to Ibiza and absolutely love it I would say you are off your head <laughs> what people think of as Ibiza is hell on earth mm -hmm. when a competition to a festival a metal festival in Ibiza mm. that took place a, a week or two before season mm. um, we managed to get a boat party uh, that was a um, heavy metal one and the, the festival was on and it was like Grebo's everywhere. And I was like, I can get with Ibiza. This is a yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people that like the staff as well that obviously live there and normally have to, I will rephrase it as endure the normal. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loving it. I don't think I'll ever forget the captain of the boat party. He kept like singing along and like he kept coming out going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. it and he was like normally oh. yeah. <laughs> it's great like it to, to put packages together would probably be a really great opportunity to show that it's not necessarily just how they envision it envisage it yeah um, yeah good point okay. mm. Mm. yeah hopefully hopefully this as i say we, you know i think a lot everyone everyone who's been engaged and was planning a wedding as of March last year is still sat there going, uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think even those that did a registry office wedding or had a small wedding, I think they're still thinking, can we have a party at some point? Like, can we have our relatives here? Yeah. So I think it is still all to be seen. Um, but as I say, I do, I, I feel like there's options and there's light at the end of the tunnel. And it's, it's always good to have those options ready for people. You know, I think if you're in a business where you're supplying a service and you're supplying something, the sooner that you can have some ideas ready to go, the better. So yeah, so that's, that's kind of, yeah. I'm going to work. So what, what areas do you cover? Cause presumably, I know you, you said you're in London, but Presumably, if you're willing to do elopement, you're not shy of travelling. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I when I was a producer, I went. Uh, I was sort of an international photo shoot producer, so I, I went all around the world really doing it. Um, and I've also shot weddings in Switzerland and uh, France and Vegas and gosh, I can't even remember now. I, um, I've said France, haven't I? Yet uh, somewhere else. Oh, uh, Omar in Ireland, which was, I know it probably sounds dull to some people, but I live in London, so that's really exciting for me. It was like cows and fields and like, it was yeah, dark, it was insane. The things um, that grow out of the ground. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, the, the, actually, the farmer got really angry with me for not helping move his cows, and it was all a bit sort of dicey at one point, but um, but no, we got out. Oh, it was really strange. I don't know. I don't know what it was. He was a bit odd. But I, I travel with my son as much as I can. He's just turned five. And so he's quite well traveled, very well traveled for a five year old. Um, so, yeah, I, I like bringing him along whenever I can and staying for a little bit longer so that we get to do the wedding and I get to do the shoot. He tends to hang out with I find someone that he knows or we hang out with someone who's a child minded for a little while and things like that. And then we get to explore wherever we are for a while. So, yeah, it's something I was doing 
pre-COVID uh, and it's something that I'd like to get back to. So, yeah, I'm, and I, I literally will go anywhere, as I say. Like, I think because I've lived in London my whole life, 40 years in one city, like, anywhere is interesting to me. <laughs> anywhere is exciting and there's new stuff to <laughs> photograph and, yeah, I love it. <laughs> So what's the process in with working with you then? Somebody obviously sees your pictures, think, I know, I, I like her style, but I don't know where to go next. Necessarily. What what process would you take people through? So what I tend to do is, um, and it's amazing how many people do this, uh, I ask when, what the date is and where they are. Because frankly, if I'm not available on that date, then we're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> uh, and if there's somewhere that I can't, get to it could be because a lot of the time if someone's getting married abroad then the flight would cost more than they could they would pay me so it just yeah. eradicate myself. but I always recommend other people in the instance where I'm not available or I can't do it for some reason um so it's always worth getting in touch anyway uh but then from then on I have this thing about there's there's three things you need to match when you've got a wedding photographer one is the price if it's not in budget don't even bother because you're both going to lose out at the end. You know what I mean? Someone's going to do a subpar thing because because it's the wrong budget. Um, personality is a really big one. Um, I like to sort of think I'm I'm very much myself because you can waste a lot of on energy trying to be someone else, uh, and you're better off just being yourself. And weddings are a big thing, man. Like it's an intimate event, and you spend a lot of time with people you know you've you got to get on you've got to know that that person will respect your personal space that they they'll back off when you don't want them so close that they won't miss the things that are important to you you know it's it's a personality thing as much as anything um and then the third one is style which is what you said there are so many styles of wedding photography nowadays it is nuts i love it i'm all for it but photographers spend years refining their style and it's a bit like tattoos it took me ages to realize that the best way to get a tattoo is to find an artist you like and then give them like I like cats or I like flowers and then work with them on a design don't walk in there with a photocopy <laughs> because you're wasting money and it's the same with photography and art and anything creative is you know look around see what you like and then approach people and say, is this something that you do and again if it's not my style I will recommend someone else because it's yeah there's just no point in someone paying me money to do you know a traditional everyone stand in a line shoot because I won't be good at it and if that's what they want there are other people who are much better at it than me yeah. what I will do is document and things like that so so yeah those are my sort of three hit lists that I, I try and discuss with people and if we match on all those three then we go ahead with you know booking and reservations and engagements the best way to contact me is through my website which is just www.magpieeye.com. There's a hyphen between magpie and I. Um, Instagram is, I think, magpie.i.photography. <laughs> and Facebook is just magpieeye. But any of those, any of those, I think you can actually Google it as well. And I'm in the rankings and you can see the logo and stuff. Um, so, yeah, any of those ways would work. Cool. So before I let you go, I saw you did a post earlier about um, engagement shoots for couples that have decided to sack off their UK weddings and get married abroad. Yeah, I, I think I was getting a bit grumpy with it as well. Uh, and I just thought I cannot be the only one who's thinking, do you know what? F this. Let's get out of here. <laughs> um, I, I just I've got an engagement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I'm offering it, free engagement shoots. Yeah. For anyone who's decided to take a big chunk of that money that they were going to spend on having everyone's man and his dog at their wedding and instead have gone actually do you know what let's just go somewhere beautiful with closest family and have a good time um so yeah for those people that have decided to do that and you can take that loosely you know if you were actually planning to get married abroad before covid i'll let you off it's fine um but yeah to get in touch and i'm gonna try and do engagement shoots it's it's a lovely thing to do engagement shoots because you get to know each other and all of those things i was talking about before like price style personality you find that out in an engagement shoot so you know if you did want to progress and book with me then i'd be available if not fine it's I've not shot in a long time, <laughs> so I'm really happy to do some free shoots and meet some people and just get some get some new work done and put it out there. So, yeah, if anyone wants to apply for that, again, uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, best route on that would be Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page, uh, Magpie Eye, then there's a form that you need to fill in. It's just a couple of questions. And then, and then yeah, I'll look at the answers and choose 
when we're allowed out to take pictures again. Yay. <laughs> How many of those, because space is that's limited, isn't it? Five. Yeah, just five. How, um, how long are you leaving it open before you pick your five? Well, originally the idea was to do it until the end of the year, but and I know we shouldn't probably jinx it, but I, you know, I'm not holding out a great deal of hope that we'll be free by Christmas. I mean, hopefully we'll be, it'll change. The answer to your question, I don't know. Back in transition afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ask, ask me in, on December the 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we might uh it might be a bit of a come out lock down and go back in but yeah 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 exactly yeah no we'll see we'll see but if I I mean you know if I'm if I get five people in the next couple of weeks then great but I'm not intending on shutting the door soon I'll put it that way cool is there anything so for those couples is there anything particular that you'd love to to do like if they came to you and said I want to, obviously if they came to you and said we want a traditional Play standing in a line, you're probably not going to pick that one. That's true. <laughs> you would say, This is the theme we want to go. Do you know oh, no question? I want to work with you. Yeah, do you know what? I for me, as I say, anything anything different is I, I love. Um, so I'm pretty wide open. Um, I I obviously have a personal preference and a personal kind of, I like the styling of alternative weddings the best. That's what I do. That's what I enjoy. That's the kind of people I connect with best as well, if we're honest. Um, people that are into doing things in more alternative ways. I tell you what I'd love. I Sorry, it just came to me. Uh, like someone who is doing a movie thing. Like a, I saw someone recently putting together a styled shoot for a Star Wars wedding and they are going all out. Like it looks amazing. They've got the costumes, they've got the cake. They've, like they really have just gone to town with it. And I kind of want an excuse to do something like that. So uh, anything cool. like movie, visually themed. I mean, Halloween's good. I Yeah, I love Halloween. But yeah, anything that's strongly visual. But I say that, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sort of pick that as a favourite over someone who's you know in a place that looks good or someone that has a great idea yeah. I think so e everyone is welcome <laughs> Fair. I actually um I'm working on a, a wedding it's supposed to be Halloween just gone but Halloween next year now hopefully mm. um and they're doing like Halloween but with like sci-fi movies and stuff because mm. We know a lot of mutual people, so I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> <You're watching. laughs> little, little secrets out of the bag, but yeah, they they've got some cool ideas, which will make some. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's, so yeah, I can imagine that uh, they would be uh, some some cool ideas to work with, especially uh, yeah. There was a sci-fi "Don't Tell the Bride" that I watched the other day. Mm. Um, <laughs> they probably got some cool pictures. I remember that. Do you remember the Don't Tell My Bride with the wrestlers? That was always my favourite. We've gone slightly off topic here, but like it was brilliant. So that, yeah, so the woman, the the man, the uh, groom and the bride were professional wrestlers, and he oh, had like a wrestling ring. I don't think I've got to that ring. one yet. That it sounds great. Google it. It's great. It's, great. it's really good. So that's see, that's I'm right. Like, Mexican I'm wrestling about... wedding. Come on, I love that. I'm about to start season six, um, seven. So I'm probably. <laughs> They'll come across it pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have seen some crazy, some crazy ones. I think they've got some. <laughs> they seem to have some on Netflix now too. That um, aren't. I haven't come across on the channel four, but they're all like crazy themed ones. Like there's yeah. no just traditional ones. Mm. They, they've come up with some. I mean, I like non-traditional, but some of these ideas, I. Do you she really want to skydive? On oh, her yeah. <laughs> She's done her hair, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, I'll, we yeah. could probably um, go off on a tangent all evening. So. <laughs> so thank you for joining me. If you ever have any uh, more projects that you want to come and share with us, feel free to do so. Thank you. Will do. Cool. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Nice to talk to you. Bye. And you. Bye.
Cool. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Join me next week around the same time when I'll be speaking to Emma Benson from Alternative and Vintage Weddings. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I or Jenny will come back to you.